here we want to have a look at solving matrix equations and this is going to introduce the need for our inverse matrix. Um, in the first example however I want to just look at some matrix equations that we have already seen examples of these in previous um, videos and exercises before now. Um, and they, that is where um, there is absolutely no complications with solving a matrix equation if the only operations we're using when we solve the equation are addition, subtraction and scalar multiplication. So that is multiplication by a number, okay, rather than multiplication by a matrix. Um, so if we're only needing to add, subtract and multiply by a number, um, and that could be also dividing by a number because when we divide by a number, so for example, when we divide by two, we're multiplying by one half. So we're still multiplying by a number. Um, but the minute we have need to multiply or divide by a matrix, um, the process becomes a lot more complicated. So let's just have a look at, th at this example where um, we shouldn't need any new techniques um, and it's simply about solving the equation. Okay, so here we have three matrices, A, B, C, and C, all two by two matrices listed in the stem of the question. Um, and for each of the equations shown here, there are three equations, um, we want to solve for X. Okay, and so that means getting X on its own. Okay, so thinking back to your sort of year seven and eight and year nine algebra, um, simply means doing the same thing to both sides of the equation until you get X on its own. So in the first equation here, focusing just on the left hand side, if we want to get x on its own, we're going to need to subtract a. Subtraction is not an issue, we can subtract matrices very easily, and so subtracting a from both sides of this matrix equation will leave us with x on the left hand side, which means we've solved for x, and we'll get 2c minus a on the right hand side. So that means two times, so I would do the rearranging without putting the matrices in, otherwise it's a lot of, there's a lot of bulky writing when, you have, when you've got all the matrices happening. So do the rearranging with, without putting substituting in the matrices. Um, so get the X on its own first and then sub the matrices in and work out your answer. So we're going to have 2 times C. C is 1, 1, 3, minus 3. And then we're going to subtract A, which is negative 1, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so 2 times C, doubling all those numbers is 2, 2, 6, negative 6. And then we are subtracting negative 1, 3, 4, and 5. And remember, subtracting matrices, we just subtract the corresponding elements. So top left minus top left gives us the new top left. So 2 minus minus 1, that is 2 plus 1, is 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 6 minus 4 is 2. Negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11. And so x is 3, negative 1, 2, negative 11. Okay, part B, we've got 4 times x equals A. Okay, so again, just focusing on what's happening to x and what do I need to do to undo that. So to get x on its own here, I would obviously need to divide both sides by 4. Or I can also think about that rather than thinking about dividing by 4 if I think about multiplying by 1 quarter. Let me just leave me space to write a multiplication sign there. Okay, a quarter times 4 is 1, so if we multiply both sides by a quarter we get x equals 1 quarter times a. So 1 quarter times a is negative 1, 3, 4, and 5. We could leave our answer like that. We can multiply it in. So we've got minus 1 quarter, 3 quarters, a quarter times 4 is 1, and 5 quarters. Okay, and finally part c. Again, let's focus first of all on getting x on its own. Okay, so the things that are happening to x, x is being doubled and then we're subtracting c. So the first thing we're going to do is add c to both sides of the equation to get rid of the c. So we get 2x equals b plus c. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is get rid of the 2. So the opposite of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2 or we could think about it as multiplying by a half. So we're going to need to do half times both sides of the equation. And that gives us x equals half of b plus c. Oops. Okay, so that is half of uh, b is 0, negative 2, 8, 1. Plus c, which is 1, 1, 3, negative 3. So adding those together, first of all. 0 plus 1 is 1, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, 8 plus 3 is 11, 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. 
and then halving all of those we're going to have half negative half 11 on 2 and half of negative 2 is negative 1. Okay, so rearranging, um, solving a matrix equation is exactly the same as solving a normal equation. As long as all we have to do is add or subtract matrices to both sides and multiply or divide by a scalar, so by a number, not by a matrix. Okay, so what we want to then think about is um, matrix equations where we might have need to multiply or divide by a matrix and how do we get around that. So it's not possible to divide by a matrix. So what we want to make, what we want to do, is make use of our understanding of the inverse matrix. That when we multiply the inverse by itself, we get the identity matrix, and that when we multiply the identity matrix by another matrix, we just get that matrix. Okay. So if we think about the matrix equation A times X equals B, where A and B are those matrices given. So if this was a number equation, so if this was, you know, 2 times x equals 5, we would solve by dividing by 2, okay? But we can't divide, So, but when it's a matrix, when it is a times x equals b, we can't divide by matrix A, okay? Matrix B divided by matrix A doesn't exist, okay? So the process falls apart. So if I go back to thinking about if it was 2 times x equals 5, we talked about in the previous examples, if we think about this as being half times 2 is how we would get rid of the 2 from over there, and so then we do half times 5 on the right hand side. And so think about it as multiplying by a half, we want to sort of use that same logic with the matrices. Rather than wanting to divide by matrix A, we want to think about multiplying by the inverse of matrix A. Okay, so. If we think about um, this equation, a times x equals b, if we multiply by the inverse of a, okay, we know that when we do that, inverse of a times a is identity matrix. Okay? And obviously we need to do the same thing to both sides, so we also multiply the right hand side by the inverse of a. Okay? Um, and then the identity matrix times x is just x. Okay? So we can essentially eliminate or get rid of the a from the left hand side of the equation by multiplying by the inverse which then means that that becomes the identity matrix which then means the identity times x is just x and we've solved for x. So then we need to focus on we have to do the same thing to both sides so if we've multiplied by the identity matrix we also need to multiply the other side of the equation by the identity matrix but what we need to be careful of is in matrix multiplication the order that we multiply by is important. Okay, So if over here on the left hand side of the equation we pre-multiplied by the inverse matrix that is it went on the left hand side we also have to pre-multiply by the inverse matrix on the right okay so it wouldn't be okay to put the inverse of a over here because we ha then haven't done the same thing to both sides We've, we pre-multiplied on the left hand side and we post multiplied on the right hand side so pre being before post being after okay so the order of the matrix multiplication is really important Okay, so this means that for this particular matrix equation, we're solving AX um, equals B. We've done that rearrangement by multiplying both sides of the um, equation by the inverse, pre-multiplying both sides of the equation by the inverse of A. And by doing that, we then find that X is the inverse of A times B. And so now we can work out what the inverse of A times B is. We can work out the inverse of A, determinant of A, is negative 1 times 5 minus uh, 3 times 4 so that is negative 5 minus 12 so it's negative 17 okay so that's where this negative 17 under here has come from that's your determinant and then your inverse of a is you're switching the negative 1 and the 5 to get these and you are leaving the 3 and the 4 where they are but making them negative then we can do that matrix multiplication. If we multiply that out, we get this matrix. We still get our negative 1 on 17 out the front. Um, and the other thing I've done here is because there's a lot of negatives here, I've multiplied the, just the negative into the matrix rather than the whole fraction. So um, that gives us positive 24, positive 13, positive 8, and negative 9, and we no longer have a negative out the front. That's not really necessary. You've answered the question at the top line. You can also multiply the 1 17th in if you want. Um, but you don't need to.
Okay, so let's see if we can replicate that process. Or actually, sorry, this is going to be a slightly different process, but I want us to still think through the logic. So our equation is x times b equals c, and we're trying to solve for x. So we ideally want to divide by b, but we can't divide by b, so we want to use the inverse of b. Now, if we want to create the identity matrix, we can't put the inverse of b over here because we need the inverse of b to actually multiply b. So the inverse of b is going to have to go here so that that is now equal to the identity matrix. So now what we have is x times the identity matrix and x times the identity is just x. Okay, so because we put the b, we post multiplied by the inverse of b, we're going to post multiply, so second, multiplying after um, by the inverse of b on the right hand side. And so we find now that x is equal to c times the inverse of b. Sorry, I should have left just a bit more room here. Let's work out the inverse of b. I might do that up here. So my determinant of b is going to be 0 times 1, which is 0, minus 8 times negative 2, which is negative 16. So 0 minus minus 16 is positive 16. So that's my determinant. My inverse of b, therefore, is 1 on 16. Um, and then I'm going to swap the numbers on the leading diagonal, and I'm going to multiply the other two numbers by negative 1. So this is my inverse up here. So I now want to do C, which is 1, 1, 3, negative 3, multiplied by the inverse of B, which is 1 on 16 times 1, 2, negative 8, 0. Okay, now the scalar multiplication, the multiplication by 1 on 16 can happen at any time. So I'm just going to stick that out the front, and I'm just going to focus on, sorry, I haven't left us a lot of room here. I'm just going to focus on, I'm just going to pop that 1 16th out the front. I'm going to first of all focus on multiplying together the two matrices. You can't swap the order of the matrix multiplication, but you can um, move the scalar multiplication to any any time. Okay, so let's focus on just multiplying the matrices together, and then we'll have 1 on 16 times that. Of course, you can get your CAS to do the matrix multiplication for you. Uh, I'm just going to continue without practicing seeing how we multiply matrices by hand. It's so important to understand what's happening for those sort of application problems. So 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. So 1 plus negative 8 is negative 7. All right, top row times right column. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 times 0, which is 0. So it's just going to be 2. Uh, bottom row times left column, 3 times 1 is 3, plus negative 3 times negative 8, which is positive 24. So 3 plus positive 24 is 27. And then bottom row times right column, 3 times 2 is 6, plus negative 3 times 0 is obviously 0, so we've just got 6. All right, and we can leave our answer as that. So x is 1 on 16 times negative 7, 2, 27, and 6. Or we can multiply in the 1 on 16, so that's negative 7 on 16, 2 on 16, 27 on 16, and 6 on 16. And then if we're going to do that though, we need to make sure that our fractions are in simplest form and those two aren't. So it's negative 7 on 16, 27 on 16, uh, sorry, 1 on 8, and 3 on 8. Okay. Again, you can leave your answer as um, one on, you can just leave it at this. There's no need to expand that fraction in. Okay, so thinking about solving the matrix equation. So multiplying by the inverse matrix, thinking carefully about whether you need to pre or post multiply by the inverse matrix, um, and doing making sure you do the same thing to both sides. So the work today on solving matrix equations is also from a worksheet um, which is in appendix C of your red booklet.